All right, we are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Nick Ferris along with Metro Vice Mayor Jim Schulman. Just a moment ago, we heard from Dr. James Hildreth over at Meharry who, uh, Jim, is he terrific or what? Oh, he's, he's amazing. We're yeah. so, so lucky to have him here. Yeah, in a lot of good information there. Now, and I asked him that question that I had asked you a bit about non-essential and essential, and then also what potential teeth there may be there for individuals. As we saw yesterday, there was a pastor in Florida that was arrested, actually. And you're saying no one's going to get arrested, but he was arrested for holding services with large crowds of people in the church. But um, it's not going to come to that here. But is there any action the city can take for those who just, blatantly blatantly violate these recommendations yeah so obviously we don't ever want to get to the point where we're arresting people for non-compliance but you know who knows um, we're just we're watching as this thing moves along but a couple things one is peer pressure you know people putting pressure on businesses that really shouldn't be open or companies that are still functioning um, peer pressure meaning you know if you have to have some employees there let the rest of them work from home uh, or if you're not essential, do not open. Uh, second is, I believe that the city would, because it's an executive order from the mayor, could eventually uh, issue citations against companies that are refusing to comply. And um, we never want to get to this point either, but some of these companies require licensing. And if they're not going to follow through and do what they're supposed to, again, this is a benefit for everybody. not. It's not strictly enforcing something against a company. This has a much broader impact. Licensing, we can always take a look at that. All right, good answers there. We've got some questions on the phone, and I'll get to more on Facebook. I think we've got a caller on line one. Good morning, caller. Go ahead. Are you there? Good morning. Yes, I'm here. Um, okay. Thank you so much for being here. It's Ann. The difference in New York and Nashville Sunday were the pictures that my daughter sent me were a empty city and a hospital being set up in Central Park mm -hmm. and our park and our Home Depot in Lowe's being overrun <laughs> with people because that was the difference this weekend. But my question for you this morning is, I was sitting in my yard last week listening to the children play, and it was such an enjoyment for me because I haven't seen my grandkids that I normally see all the time. And that's what keeps me going are my grandchildren. So I was just listening to the children in my neighborhood when an inmate crew came down and worked in my neighborhood. And I was shocked that the sheriff's inmate crews were still working. The sheriff has not been on the show recently, but that's a question worth asking. I don't know, Jim, I know inmate crews provide a valuable service for things that need to be done. I'm sure Ann's concern is, are the crews, how close are these inmates to one another? And of course, in the jails, they're pretty darn close, which is a concern. And then, of course, to the citizens in the area. I, I can't imagine the mayor or the sheriff not being aware of the fact that if they're going out, they need to maintain some right. separation. Right, and I don't know exactly, um, I don't know anything about specific inmate crews, but I know the sheriff is taking all kinds of precautions uh, in the jails, uh, I assume with his employees and I would guess with his crews to make sure that everybody's practice, practicing social distancing, taking all the proper safeguards because this is very important. Because again, uh, Ann was talking about you know New York, New York is basically closed down because there's so many cases going on because everybody's so close to each other. So the only way to stop it there is to get people off the streets and get people away from each other. We're trying to do the same thing here. I know she was concerned about Home Depot in the parks. That's why we keep pushing this idea. If you, if you need something essential, go out and get it and then go home. Do not, this is not business as usual. You have got to take steps right now. Yeah, um, let's go next to Robin. Robin, good morning. What's on your mind? Yeah, I'd like to ask the vice mayor there, uh, why can't the city uh, in Davidson County and all over the uh, area give people their water bills and their electric bills for a couple of months there, uh, including the businesses and stuff, and let the federal government or the, uh, somebody pick it up where people don't have to get out and go pay their water bills and stuff. And 
How can they pay them when they hadn't sent out these checks? So. Okay, I know where he's going on that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people facing a real squeeze. Well, two things obviously don't go downtown to pay a bill if you have to pay a bill. Uh, you know, pay it by mail. Uh, don't get out if you don't have to. But these are the types of ideas, Nick, that we're taking a look at. I know there's a small business task force that's been created. I know the mayor's office has been looking at it. I know the chamber has been looking at it. I know the utilities are looking at it. So the response is, what about, I guess it was kind of like waiving those bills for a while um, until we figure out what we've got to do. I know the utilities have taken certain steps about, you know, late fees and other things, getting all that stuff waived. But I think everything is on the table. That's not to say that we can waive all the utility bills. I understand that as well. There are costs involved with all those things. But any ideas like that, we take in and we push in and we see what the possibilities are. So, yeah. you know, whether we can do it or not, I don't know. But at this point, we're looking at everything. I appreciate the comment. Yeah, and you know, just him bringing that up made me think about something. And I heard a story on NPR this morning discussing when we talk about essential services and employees. You know, aside from hospital, of course, and and police and and fire. I'm telling you what, Jim. Um, thinking about those who work in our utilities, and I'm talking about the water department. A lot of that's very specialized in the mm -hmm. testing, okay? Or the people that that work at NES or some of the other electric companies. I'm not talking about cable TV. I'm talking about these. Just imagine if somehow the virus made its through, way through there, and a bunch of them got sick, and all of a sudden you got home tonight and you had no water and you had no power. I mean, that, those, that's essential to me, and, and that made me think how scary that is and how some municipalities have taken steps where they're really isolating some of these specialized workers right. that are needed to monitor things. Is Metro going to look at something like that? I mean, I want those folks that are testing the water that make sure the water supply runs and is working properly are protected to the max and maybe special steps taken. Same thing with the yeah. electric company folks. We are, we are, again, very fortunate. We're talking about Dr. Hildreth, but we are very fortunate in Nashville to have some great people leading some of our departments like the water department, NES, so forth. I know the water department was taking steps early, early on. They needed people to make sure that everything was functioning and I think they got people to kind of stay in place in the facility right. and stay away from each other so that they weren't exposed and that they could keep these things operating. So they were looking really far ahead. So congratulations to Scott Potter at Great. the end of the water department. Those people, again, there are other departments doing the exact same thing, but they looked at this thing, realized early on what they needed to do. They needed to make sure that these things continue to function like they were supposed to, and they set up a plan to make sure that their folks were in good shape and could stay away from each other and could do their job functions. It's so difficult. We've got so many people on the front line but they're doing a great job. That's really good to know. It. That's good to know. Okay, then let's go to Stephen now. Stephen, good morning. What's your uh, question or comment? Hi, okay, Stephen. so uh, I understand that he's the, the governor of, Mer of Nashville or whatever. No, he's the vice um, mayor, vice mayor. Vice mayor, yeah. So I understand he's vice mayor. I live in Tallahoma, uh, Manchester area. Mm -hmm, sure. I'm trying to figure out if probation is considered mandatory or essential or non-essential. You mean, are you on probation or are you talking about probation yeah. officers? Uh, I, I am on probation. Okay, in terms of whether or not you need to go and, and have your face-to-face -face meeting right, with... Because, pro ah. Right, because yeah. uh, when, I talked to, when I talked to her this morning, she said uh, it doesn't matter if, uh, if Governor Bill Lee put a mandatory lockdown on everything, you still have to report. And, and you have to report in person, is that what you're saying? Okay, because, you know, I yeah. thought I've seen, and Jim, I don't know if you have a take on that, um, it, where there were some of the restrictions or the, have been relaxed, and I'm almost certain, right. I would imagine that as well, unless there's a way, if you can meet with a distance with your probation officer, there's a way you can do it, just as Jim is sitting about eight feet from me right here in studio. Yeah, so um, what I would do is go back and look at <clears throat> the executive orders and see if the governor, because I'm not sure whether the governor, I know the governor has waived a number of these requirements, but what uh, I think the individual is doing is you need to report in. The question is, do you report in in person, which I think um, hopefully has been waived, that at this point what you're doing is you're, you're doing what you're supposed to. You don't want to get in trouble with any of that. What you want to do is report into your probation officer and and if they need to see you for some reason, if that's still a requirement, make sure you practice social distancing. Everybody needs to know that. Again, I think if you're not sure, you can look at the Department of Corrections website. You can look at the executive orders that have come through. 
or call your probation officer or call the Department of Probation and simply ask. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, again, you want to follow the requirements of your probation. You don't want to do, you don't want to mess that up. Um, but I believe that, um, I'm sure steps have been taken to try to make sure that people don't have to, you know. Right. They, they follow the law. Again, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know. Check and make sure you're doing it right. Yes. That's what I'm saying. No, I know what you're saying, and I, keep in mind this. You're right. He needs to follow the guidelines. All should as best they can safely. But the bottom line right now, we're already doing stories on how jails and prisons are releasing inmates. Okay, early release, nonviolent. If you're not committing a crime and you're nonviolent and you miss a probation meeting, that's going to probably be something you may have to deal with down the line, but I'm going to tell you right now, police aren't coming to pick you up and lock you up. That's going against everything we see happening right now, because you're not a danger to society. You just have to pay your debt and follow through, so keep that in mind as well. All right, let's go next to uh, Michelle. Michelle, what's on your mind, Michelle? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I've got just some little issue issues with him not with the governor not issuing stay at home with all of this going on in Sumner County and um, the surrounding counties um, with all the people in Home Depots, Walmarts, um, just lingering around. All right, and I think she's not the only one. Again, your Metro, your you know, with the mayor here who was proactive, I think, well before the governor was. But let's face it right now, Jim, the governor's taking a lot of criticism. Yesterday's announcement was a step in the right direction. A lot of people would say too late and um, or too little too late. And he didn't mandate anything. Now, the mayor here hasn't mandated anything either. A mandate meaning going before beyond what we've done and requiring. <sighs> Do you have a thought on that? You want to weigh in on that? Well, so um, Michelle's point was, um, you know about the governor um, so um, the governor took the same steps yesterday we're, we're safer at home so he did take those steps yesterday um, yesterday um, Sumner County the Davidson County went uh, started what a week and a half ago Sumner County followed behind it um, the governor has now placed a, a safer at home across the state um, I think what what concerns me more is something that Michelle said and so did Ann and that is um, First of all, they're saying that Home Depot is packed and, um, you know, other places are packed as well. That's information that is still relevant. Um, it still bothers me greatly that um, everybody needs to make sure, including places that are packed, to make sure they limit the number of people coming through. You can always have lines outside uh, and then let people in a little bit at a time. This information, Michelle and people who are calling in, I'm going to send back. I'm going to make sure that it goes up to the governor's <coughs> office. I'm sure they've already heard that, but make sure it gets to the governor's office and to the mayor to make sure that if people are not practicing what they're supposed to be, we need to get information into those um, entities and make sure they take the proper steps to keep people safe. Yeah. So this is important information. It was interesting, Jim. I did see uh, several photos sent into the newsroom um, from this weekend. As I said, it was a beautiful day, especially on Sunday. And some of these uh, nursery and gardening centers at some of the big box stores and the like were crowded with people buying items to go home and do their gardening. Now, again, there's nothing wrong. I mean, look, I'm probably going to go and stop by a store on my way home today to pick up some items we need, okay? But I'm not going in there if it's crowded. I'm going to keep my distance as I do. I'm going to pay, and then I'm going to leave and then I'm gonna wash my hands but I mean this was Jim packed at I don't know which one of them was but you saw people almost shoulder to shoulder picking up plants and everything and I'm like now that's just going you, you, again I don't necessarily blame the stores for that I you know the, I blame the people they're shopping use your head you're gonna walk into a crowd listen we'll take a break on that note when we come back uh, we'll take more of your calls on Facebook comments as well for Metro Vice Mayor Jim Shulman <laughs> 